So here we are at Terry Sins. I know that's an upside down logo right now. Beautiful logo though. And Terry's just doing the finishing touches on my tent. Terry, how many of these tents do you do a year, you figure? Uh, we've done, uh, on an average year, about 50 or 60. 50 or 60 a year, eh? Yeah. And uh, some years are more than others, depending on different projects that's on the go. Now, what, uh, what size canvas is this? This is a 10... Uh, <coughs> it's a 10.10 10 ounce, or, or 11 ounce canvas. And it's a sun canvas, so it's treated for uh, uh, mildew, rot, flame, and flame retardant as well. So flame retardant and mildew and rot is treated for. Yeah, and if you want to have some idea on how many we've done over the years, that's the month, the year, and the number of tents that we've done so far. Wow. So we're at over, uh, over a thousand tents since we started making tents and they've anywhere from a, a six by eight up to as big around as 30 foot diameter big round ones wow yeah so we've done a number of larger ones that could be running anywhere from uh, yeah do you ever do the teepee type uh... I haven't done the teepee type but we've done some round tents before okay you know, round yeah yes. tents, but not the teepee I think those round tents are used up in, um, oh geez, the, the way up north in uh, Torngat. Yeah, Torngat National Park. We've actually gotten, oh, I think we've got about 15 tents up in the National Park. Wicked. So if you, anybody traveling up to the Torngat National Park and you're staying in the tent, this is the fellow that made it. Him and his buddy Steve. I don't yes. know where Steve's left. Steve's right out in the back room in the other room now. We're going to put the uh, binding on the edge on the... Uh, on, on this part. Oh, very good. So now, uh, why are you down in the, in, in the, in the floor here? Does that we, give you more? A few years back, quite a few years back, I was over in uh, the Maritimes and I went into a, a big uh, big operation that they rent these big uh, uh, tents for, for different events. And uh, when I was over there, I noticed over on the far side that uh, they had these sewing pits and uh, so what it does, it allows me to use the um, entire floor here because of my tabletop. Because the table is level with the rest of the floor, we're able to... Because uh, normally if you're using with the machine, your fabric goes from here, comes over the edge, and then drops on the other side. Oh, fair but enough. now our fabric can come here and go... So it just makes it a little bit easier to handle the bigger items. Fair enough. <clears throat> That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, so it, it sort of looks odd in the first when you first look at it, wondering why we got a hole in the floor, and but it. Uh, now, Terry, you're my age, and I notice you're not even wearing glasses, and you're able to tread the needle. Yeah, that's pretty <laughs> and, good, buddy. And the other thing is, I'm uh, I want to get one eye. I've got a lazy eye that I've had for years, so I can only see out of one eye. Um, well, for a one eye. <laughs> I'm gonna call you middle aged. Yeah, yeah. Even though we gotta live quite a long time if we're middle aged. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, so far my uh, uh, eyesight has been has been pretty good. Um, but it's uh, yeah when you when you're doing this uh, with regards to making the tents there now where I've made so many uh, a lot of it I don't even uh, I don't even actually think about it. You just sit down and start sewing it. Right? It's just. It just becomes natural, right? Second nature. Yeah, yeah. And we've done, uh, yeah, we've done a lot of. Uh, so what was that ribbon going to do? Is it going to increase is the strength? Well, two things. It increases strength, but it also puts a finished. Uh, if you see here, there's some raw edges here. Yeah. So this will put the finish on the tent itself. Okay. Any edge. So. <clears throat> and. Uh, 
and uh, and plus it where we're doing an extra roll of stitching on the canvas as well it will uh, it will strengthen the uh, the uh, and if you notice here this is the uh, it's a Sun Forge Marine boat trunk CPA 84 is a Canadian fire code okay so then you know that this canvas a tent that's commercially made, according to the law, has to be made with fire retardant canvas. Okay, fair enough. <clears throat> so, we have a number of people locally that would make their own tents, and they can use whatever they want if they're going to make them themselves. Okay. Uh, I've been approached to make tents and people supply their own material, and it falls under the same thing. If it's not fire retardant, then we can be held responsible for it for something happening <clears throat> if somebody got injured in a, in a tent that's not fire retardant. So you have to protect your own uh, yep. your own butt. <clears throat> well, we could be up to, held liable up to a million dollars. So it's just not worth the... Uh, That'd be a lot more tents, eh, to have to cover that. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, yeah. <clears throat> so uh, we've... Uh, this size here we're doing 8x10 is an, is, is an average size. 8x10, um, 9x12 are two sort of main sellers. What, what would you say would be your number one seller, size-wise? Uh, it's hard. I think it would be a toss-up between this 8x10 and a 9x12. Uh, I would almost have to go back over the books to see what uh, see which one. But it will be a matter of, of one of those two that... Uh, that will be uh, that would be the top candidate. What's that? I said that would be the top candidate. Yeah, we've done. Uh, <clears throat> we've shipped them as far west as Saskatchewan. Uh, not a big lot, but we have. Um, so we have shipped some out of the province, some in uh, some in the Maritimes. Um, but the majority of the tents are sold uh, locally. Uh, but we have, uh, when Voices Bay first started, we, we, we sold uh, quite a few tents at that time because oh. they were using them for, for the mining operation. So and prospecting, were, I guess, prospect, and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And usually when they buy their tents, they're buying mostly 12 by 14 or 14 by 16. And they would be buying six. Uh, probably five or six at a time. Now, you're setting up for base camp, right? Right on. Now, Terry, you know you're going to be on YouTube because of this, mm -hmm. eh? Probably not your first time on YouTube. Uh, I don't know. It may be. Yeah, it's. Uh, we've been we've been doing this since '92. Uh, uh, well, the business started in '92, but tents we started a few years after that. Now. Are you the owner of the business right from day one? Yes, started it. Uh, my operation actually started. Uh, give you a little bit of history. Uh, shoe repair is my trade that I picked up uh, from a place in St. John's, Modern Shoe Hospital on Ducker Street. So would you be a cobbler? Yes. By trade? I learned shoe repair since I was 13 years old. Uh, after school, I started to <coughs> learn under uh, uh, the Wright family, Leslie Wright and his son Kevin, and uh, picked it up on the job training. And uh, after graduating from high school and uh, and was married, uh, we came uh, came up here in '92 to start the business. So it started in the, the shoe repair was the beginning of it all, and then it gradually diversified and, and, and went from there. So what is it, what would you focus on your business now? Would you say? I would say we're looking at uh, we're the, <clears throat> the manufacturing part would be would be a big part of this uh, the business. Uh, the shoe repair is pretty well almost all gone, um, and the um, the. Uh, uh, but then we're also doing. Uh, Besides the craft store, the fabric store, we've got uh, uh, embroidery machines, so we do embroidery on clothing, um, picture frames, we 
print pictures on canvas. We do actual framing of the pictures. So, <coughs> so we change it up quite a bit and between all of it it keeps us busy all year round. And uh, you notice the loop on either end here, this is where you would tie your clothesline on. Okay, inside fair enough. Tent. Inside the tent, that'll inside go away. Yeah, so all right. if you're in the winter time you can hang up your mitts. And uh, in ra fall rabbit catching and stuff when yeah. you come in after a cold day on the I snare line. So Terry, I was looking around and checking out prices and comparing prices to other uh, tent manufacturers, and, and uh, you're you're uh, very uh, compatible with all the prices around. Uh, yeah, we, we try and uh, we try and keep an eye on uh, on pricing and, and try and uh, you know and try and keep the pricing as uh, as fair as we can. Um, prices did go up a little bit uh, recently due to the. Uh, American dollar, the uh, the canvas that we use is treated uh, actually comes out of the United States. So uh, at times, depending on when we buy it, sometimes it's, uh, the price goes up, and we have no choice but to uh, increase the prices. The last price increase we had was uh, 2007. So we just increased them. Um, there uh, this this year so um, it's you know we're able to hold the price for quite a while um, somebody uh, just to give you a bit of technical uh, information this the stitch that we're doing here is what they call lock stitch so each stitch is locked in okay <clears throat> some companies I've noticed use what you would call a chain stitch now what chain stitch means <coughs> excuse me uh, chain stitch means if you take a thread on one spot and pull on it, it comes right apart. Okay, so <coughs> yours are a lock stitch so that if it's anywhere, it's only going to frame that one little spot. Yes, uh, the, and and the, and, the, and the reason they would use a a um, chain chain one is if you notice that uh, he just changed the bobbin. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, with their operation, they would have two big spools with no bobbin. Okay. So for for them, you know, it's, I guess it's time, but for me, I would have some concerns of that that type of sewing that it would end up coming uh, coming off. Right? Yeah. So. And that's more uh, costlier and um, more painstaking uh, repair, I guess, eh? Well, yeah, yeah. Well, like I said, if you take a thread and pull on it, then it's going to uh, just keep unraveling. Keep unraveling out there, and then you. Like, um, yeah, then you'll end up with it coming apart. Well, you certainly move along uh, quite quickly with that uh, with that ribbon or, yeah. or that seam. Yeah, when you when you've done so much of it over the years, a lot of it just becomes uh, sort of second nature or natural. Now, Terry, where where do you find uh, the problem with uh, most people uh, in their tents? Uh, areas? Is it uh, them storing it uh, wet and? Uh... Yeah, you, you really got to be careful. Uh, tents like this could last you for years, or we had a situation where somebody had a tent and they never got a year out of it. But the problem was that it wasn't with the tent. The problem was somebody uh, <coughs> had a loan of a tent. He used it in the pouring rain, put it in the bag, and it was left in that same bag for, uh, I think it was two or three months before it was taken out again. And by that time, the mold, and, and it was just garbage. So, this canvas is treated for mold uh, resistance, right? Yes. But I mean, is is like anything, if you soak it in water, and store it in a, in a uh, sealed container, a, yeah, you're going to... You're, you're asking gonna, for trouble. You're gonna ask for trouble, but so if a tent, if you, if a tent is wet, make sure that the first opportunity you have to take it out of the uh, uh, take it out and 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 uh, dry, let it, allow it to dry before it's packed away. Okay. So that's really nice for anybody out there with these uh, wall tents. Take it from an expert who's uh, making.
All right, guys, this is the final stitches that is going to be made to uh, to the tent. And with that, Terry, what would you say? She's done? She's done, ready to go. Ready to be, uh, we'll roll her up and package her away, and then she's ready to be set up in the woods. Perfect. My home away from home. So I'm, I'm down here at uh, Terry's Tents in uh, Goose Bay, Goose Bay, uh, Newfoundland, Labrador, the big land, like a lot of people like to refer it to. And uh, I'm getting my tent today. You've already seen me go out and do the first burn on my stove to get the zinc taken off of it. Very important because uh, zinc will make you uh, very toxic, make you sick and headache and stuff. But uh, Steve, he's going to get Steve now and they're going to fold up the tent and put it in the uh, bag that I'll be using to transport this tent on all my adventures in the future. And here goes Steve. Steve, you also worked on the tent, eh? Yeah. So this is a combined effort between uh, Steve and Terry. They each have their own. Hey, can I get, a, can I get that uh, logo there, yeah, Terry? Yeah, we will. Check that out. Terry's tents. And after I'll put a, a number in the video in the link below. And, so uh, if anybody wants to call Terry, he ships them all over Canada. This is your uh, stove pipe for your pipe to come out through the door. Perfect. And the uh, fly screen windows. Now I, I got one on, on either side, eh Terry? Yes, one on either side of the door, on now, the walls. Now these are additions to the base price that you see if you go on Terry's Tents. Uh, I do. Is that the uh, website right there? Uh, yeah, right. Uh, the website is right there. www.terrystents.ca So you go on there, you'll see a basic price list. But for every edition, like the windows, I do believe there were an extra $45 for yes, each, Yes, that's, that's correct, for each window. Yeah. And he's put those windows all over the place. You can get a full screen front door. You can have the windows in the back. You can move the stove plate locations around. So now, how are you folding this up? So we're gonna grab all three loops. Yeah. On the end. Is this how I should be folding it up? Yeah, you can fold up once you're finished. After make sure, like I said, you make sure the tent is dry. Okay. So yeah. I'm just gonna open up here, and make sure they're all sort of. Uh, so obviously that center, uh, the center line of loops, that'll be my ridge pole. That's your ridge pole going through. If you look here. These are two feet apart on the side walls. Yeah. And these ones are a foot apart right up through the center. Perfect. So all we're gonna do now is swing it out. And then we're going to pull the two walls, the, the front end and the back end, we'll pull it out towards the front, just to get all the... And once we get it pulled out here, we'll just pull it tight here and then we're just gonna throw it back in this way. Yeah. And then we're going to take it, we're going to fold it in half. Okay. Usually flip it over again just to make sure we get it all tucked in. So we tuck everything inside. And then we'll just roll the, in, roll the tent up. Oh, the tent is rolled and not yeah. folded. Okay, fair enough. So we'll just roll it up and, and uh, I mean, there's other ways to do it, but uh, it's just the way we do it, and we'll... So we roll it up and uh, tuck it in, and then we put it into a bag. And uh, the weight of that, uh, I do believe, is like 33, 33 pounds, is it, for 8x10s? 8x10 is 30... I think it's 32 pounds. 32 pounds? And then the... Uh, 33. 33 pounds? Yeah. Okay. And that little stove I bought for it, that was, uh, I do believe, 17 pounds. So I think the total combined weight for my tent and stove is 50 pounds. 50 pounds of adventure waiting to happen. Oh, and you also got a nice logo on, your, uh, on the bag there. On the bag as well. Same. We put some rope in there now. Well, thank you so much, Steve. No problem. Much appreciated, buddy. You're welcome. And there you go. There's your tent ready to go. Tent all done and ready to go.
ready to go to set up uh, wherever you decide to set it up. Oh, that will be getting used on the salmon rivers, uh, trap line, snare line, moose hunting. That's going to get used all over uh, Newfoundland, Terry. Thank you so much, buddy. All right, well, thank you. Much and appreciated. Hopefully, you, hopefully you'll uh, enjoy your uh, many sleeps in this tent. All right, well, thank you so much. Okay. Much appreciated. Thank you.